we have these amazing huge granite boulders that have sort of bowls dug out into them. So the idea is that that's used as a natural mortar and pestle and the sensory fence that goes alongside it. Um, they have access to plants and loose materials that they can, can grab out. Another element of our new space is we have a fruit orchard. We're excited about the possibilities of using that with our vegetable garden that we've already got. We've had lots of parents that were involved in the project last year have actually come back and used the space on the weekends because they were excited because they were a part of it, but also because they felt that their child was lacking those opportunities to explore with challenge and risk. Through that process last year of educating families about the importance of nature play and the challenge and risk, there's obviously been a lot of thinking going around um, and people are looking for that for their child. So already we have had conversations with the school next door about involving their classes coming over and not just the reception children but we're talking about reception to year sevens coming to use the space. When the outdoor area was finished the children were really really excited because they'd been watching through the fence all the developments that had taken place. Since the upgrade uh, the children have used the area definitely in a different way. Um, we have lots of loose parts available to the children um, and rather than saying these particular things need to be used in the sandpit or these particular things need to be used in the stage area, the children can use those things and take them throughout the yard wherever they like. Um, we've found that the natural environment is the provocation for the children rather than us setting the environment up in a certain way. We've noticed children taking on lots of risk taking, climbing on the large boulders whereas at first some of them were unsure and would watch for a while and after they'd watch other children they'd slowly have a go. Um, especially the rope climbing area, that's been a real challenge for some children. After fruit time the children have the choice of being indoors or outdoors. Usually all of the children go outside, there's no one left inside uh, and they seem to persist at tasks, they'll choose something and they seem to stay there for quite some time, really engaged. Since the new yard, we have seen lots of different types of play that maybe we didn't see that much before the redevelopment. We've seen lots of children making cubbies using large sticks, branches. We've got some um, sheets and material outside that they can use as well. Children have extended their play. They used to use bowls and do lots of potion making. Now they use the large boulders and they can collect things and really grind things down. They've been dyeing the rocks in the sensory garden purple with some berries that they found in the vegetable patch. When you go outside, even at the end of the day, you often see evidence of their play. So you'll see a little collection of rocks or a little collection of pine cones um, in little spaces throughout the yard. Just that's their footprint for the day. You can see where they've been and what they've been learning. Our role as an educator, we feel has changed slightly since the redevelopment. We're really trying to take a step back, which can be challenging sometimes. Really allowing the children to explore and engage in the environment in the way that they choose. Obviously, still need to be safe and still need to be respectful of garden beds and things like that, but allowing them if they want to take the trucks from the sandpit down to the mud patch or if they want to roll them down the hill to see which one crashes into the fence first, that's okay. Letting them explore, letting them um, be the driver of their own learning in the outdoor environment is definitely a change for us. So Ashton, what do you like doing best outside at Kindy? The ropes. Climbing up the ropes? Yeah. yeah. Um, make mud pies. You like making mud pies? I like climbing on the ropes. The ropes. Can you, what do you like doing on there? Um, standing up on the cardboard thing and climbing over it and uh, jumping down on my bottom. I like mm, mm, climbing on these rocks. Yeah. What's tricky? I'm trying to climb up the tree over there the big thing when we only can try to get it. Awesome. Um, a tree trunk is for me to be tricky. As a parent, from a personal point of view in the consultation, yeah, I certainly felt that um, we were given every opportunity to contribute. Seeing all the children just race out there straight away this morning to go and play and it's a co quite a cold winter's day, you know, that's a fair endorsement of, of achievement as well, that, you know, it's somewhere that they want to be. One of the goals of the outdoor learning projects was to really connect families and children with nature through play. Um, and I can really see that happening at these sites already. 
what we're learning is that these sites can become really a focus for other educators in other educational settings. So people from government and non-government schools from this local area have already come and visited this site and are learning about the sorts of things that they can perhaps take back into their context um, and to work with their children. Families are also being encouraged to use the space outside the times that the kindergarten might be open. So play groups, childcare centres are being offered opportunities to come and use the space. As educators, we've found a big difference in coming out here in the morning and bring, we bring the children out and we look at what we're putting back into this space and we're really educating the children and um, as staff ourselves really thinking about, let's put tools back in here for children to use. It's just been um, wonderful. We're not dragging loads of stuff out and loads of stuff in and children are being selective. The log climbing structure at the back is great. It gives kids a challenge, they can take risks and it can be anything they want it to be in their imagination. It can be a pirate ship one day, it can be a boat, it can be a cubby house, it can be whatever. So it opens itself to lots of different play. A group of children have been really fascinated with the fossils in the limestone. So they've been using little paint brushes and tools and tapping away at the limestone and finding fossils and shells. And it's just really opened up lots of possibilities for learning and where do we take them and what can we learn from this. As far as building a stronger community throughout this whole process, we've made lots of really strong connections with people in the community like the Mount Gambier City Council, local Bowendick elders and people from the community, um, people from the Mount Gambier Children's Centre and other areas and, and even the Melaleuca School, like it's a shared learning space and we've got residents from the nursing home and they bring their um, people over for a walk around and a look around and they've just been yeah, amazed at what's here and how it's changed. So it's great to have those people in the community, both young and old, involved and from different places in the community. The new outdoor learning space is just fabulous and um, it's really exciting the potential that and the options that children have for learning here. Some new things we've noticed is that the running, just the running for running's sake has stopped and slowed down and some of those children have found some areas in the yard to stop and engage in learning and not just run. We're amazed to see the reaction the children had. An example of children seeing it different to adults, uh, the hill where the slide, the mound where the slide is, we thought the rope and the um, stepping boards would be really poppy, but no, children would rather go up the slippery, slopey slide where there's more risk involved actually. Our staff at the primary school and the kindergarten are now doing professional learning together in playful pedagogies. And we've also um, started to open up the space um, over here for the community to be able to bring their kids into this space as well. So we've stuck a door in a building, which doesn't sound like much, but the door is huge because the door means that everyone's connected now. So if you come to use the community space um, through a play group, or you come to the kindy um, as a parent, or you come to the junior primary um, to listen to your kids read, we're all connected. Um, we're all a part of the same learning community and we want to engage parents from the very beginning. Having the involvement of parents and teachers and, and the community actually has made it so much better. There's more ideas that were sort of thrown into the mix to get a better result at the end of the day. So I think it couldn't have been what it is without the involvement of the community. Every child that comes into the playground wants to go up on top of the tunnel. It's got the grass mound over the top of it, so the tunnel's actually on ground level, but the grass mound over the top has really given the children a, a chance to view the whole area from a, quite a different space. Having water available has made a huge difference. They've learnt very quickly how to use it wisely, and they use it purposefully how to make canals and riverbanks and, and they're learning about erosion and all of those natural concepts as we go, we can bring all of that language into it. There's a little rock just behind me that has uh, grooves cut into it and that's their mud pie rock but it automatically fills up overnight when it rains and so they come in the morning and there's a, a ready-made puddle and the sandpit right next door so that's used all the time, it's been really wonderful. We've had a child, one in particular, who has been a selective mute and was reluctant to come and play outside. In her experience of life, that's not something that she does comfortably. So uh, this environment, because it's got purposeful areas built into it, she has become the custodian of the orchard. 
and the language that's coming out of her, she's forgotten about not talking because she's so excited with what she's seeing happening that she wants to impart that. So for her, the learning has been enormous. The families within our community have been very excited uh, by the space. They, they really love it. They're very devoted to its care and uh, are coming on weekends to make sure that everything is being looked after the way it should be. I'm using it more in small group times now um, because there's lots of places that we can come together. We can take a lot of our indoor learning outside which the children are really loving. They just love being in the new space. The children have been exploring risky play by seeking out parts of the environment that they see as challenging. For example, the um, stepping stone tree stumps. Uh, each day they've been coming out and um, doing a little bit of self-assessment uh, risk on that and deciding for themselves whether they can manage it. And often they'll call for an educator just to come and watch them to support them and having a go. So it's building their resilience and their ability to be able to persist when they find something challenging. And um, I find that they come back the next day and have another go. So they're really loving you know, the challenge of not having something really predictable and easy to do, but having to keep coming back and having another go and persisting with it. I love the fact that they've wrote welcome in my language, which is Turkish, across the pathway. And I feel like if I bring my mum here, she's going to feel very welcome because she's from overseas. So she'll just love to see that she feels very welcome when she comes into the play area. And it's just printed right across the, the path. So it's excellent. I'm actually thinking about using this space for my daughter's first birthday because we don't have a big backyard so I can bring the tables and chairs and the kids get to play outside rather than hiring jumping castles and things like that. I've noticed that they've, the, the children spread out a lot more and that they play in small groups in the different zones and there's less play that is like just completely follow the leader kind of play. Kids are really making really good choices. The natural elements for climbing around the spaces like the boulders and the tree trunks um, give both a boundary to some of that natural space as well as giving um, a really great sense of a uh, different physical challenge for kids. We've added a lot more raised garden beds into our zone so that we can have a lot more seasonal plantings and we've also um, taken the fence out from between that used to divide the spaces, um, which makes a bit more of an open vista. We had one parent who was saying, well, maybe I wouldn't put a water feature in the middle of a children's playground. And we said, well, it's actually not a water feature, it's actually a play space. And uh, he was saying, well, what, what might they do with rocks? and water. They experiment, they collaborate, they make bridges, they, they think about where the water's going to flow, they, they, they dig down. It's all really good actually for their fine motor control as well as their sensory development as well as their collaboration skills. One of our big focuses across our site has been to make some guidelines for all of the kids across our site so that they really understand that the, we want the natural elements to thrive. What I've seen is that children are really caring about the space. And I think they're caring about the space because they could see their ideas actually highlighted within it. You know, lots of kids said that they want a bridge, they've got a bridge. Lots of kids said they wanted a cubby, they've got a cubby. You know, for that then to be a palpable thing for them that they've experienced over their time, to be listened to and then to see it in fruition, I think it's been fabulous. We noticed that they were really engaged in their play rather than wandering around looking for something to do. We noticed that behavioural issues or um, incidences dropped significantly and we also um, noticed that children were doing a lot of cross-age interactions more so than they were before. The conversations that we're hearing when they come back into the classroom, previously we had lots of very puffed children coming in and talking about soccer and the rules of games, whereas now they're coming in generally calmer about themselves and talking about shape and texture and how something felt and something that they found, they found a worm or you know what they did about that. The geography curriculum that I'm currently doing with the year one class, instead of um, looking on Google or YouTube to try and find resources. We've got all of the resources that we need just in our backyard. 
Our parent community have been quite excited about um, the changes. I noticed that after school there's a lot more kids and parents using the space. I've really noticed that parents have been really interested in what's happening and very opinionated. Um, we've got a Facebook group where some parents were um, you know, talking about the risks and other parents were saying that they're good, so it's created a debate. Some parents were worried that the rocks might be dangerous or children might get hurt um, and other parents have um, posted articles about how that's, um, it's really important for children to learn how to manage those risks um, and you know, decide for themselves rather than have a teacher tell them. I especially like the water pump and the creek bed because before we were sort of told, oh no, you can't play with the water because it will ruin the, the, all the sand and the grass and everything like that. Definitely think it's a lot more of an adventure just going around the school now. Because when we were younger, we sort of tried to, but there wasn't really much we could yeah. do. But I, I, if I was one of the younger kids now, I'd feel really cool with yeah. all this space. Yeah. yeah. Because it was just more coloured slides and monkey bars. It was really just designated stuff that you'd play with, but now there's just different stuff where you can roam free and have your, um, express your imagination. Children absolutely love the space. We're finding the level of engagement is very high. There's a lot more group work happening and cooperation happening between the children. And having access to the creek has um, has given the children an opportunity to explore some of the concepts that they po possibly weren't able to explore as in depth in the past. So we've found that numeracy has been a huge part of their exploration of the creek and being able to uh, think about depth and measurement. There's been lots of conversations around how we can make the water run from one end to the other. Our staff were able to have an open discussion with each other about their own um, concerns. We had a day where we went through the concepts of nature play. We went right back to basics and we were able to openly discuss the things that we were worried about. We then planned for how those things could be overcome and how we could manage those risks at a, at a site level. We've also had lots of discussions around the intentionality of our educators and what they need to be doing in our space. The teachers are having um, open conversations with each other about the ways that they can improve their practice and, and improve the way that the children learn in the space. We've always believed that children are capable and competent in their learning and I think that um, this space is encouraging that to happen at a more complex level. The children are able to have their voices heard in our space are able to plan their learning and direct their own learning and are able to experience things at their own pace. Having the pizza oven is going to be a catalyst for bringing community together. So we'll be able to use it through our curriculum as well as using it uh, for family days and for events throughout the year. Yeah, my daughter, even at home, she puts her boots on, she goes out in the mud and yeah, she's uh, an outdoor girl, so for her, that, this is heaven. When we come in with the other parents, all we talk about is the pizza and saying how we can get together and do pizzas and, you know, it'd be great to do it on, um, you know, occasions. Uh, so it's not just a kid-friendly place, it's also for adults as well. So, yeah, it broadens it for everybody. In terms of the work I do, I run a program called OPAL, which is all about supporting families and children to eat well and be active. And one of our key messages is promoting outdoor play and nature-based play as part of our Life Looks Brighter Outside campaign. There's a flow-on cultural shift and all of us are dealing with parents and it's led to a shift in how we describe play and how much we accept riskier play. We're very blessed in Campbelltown that we have some fantastic children's spaces and part of what I'd love to see is that those spaces connect even better than they are at the moment. So 100 metres from here we've got a fantastic outdoor adventure playground. 100 metres from here we've got an amazing children friendly library. Across the road we've got this fantastic Fourth Creek Trail. And these are all great opportunities for families and children to have good experiences that support their development and I just want to build on the great work that's happened here to enable that connection to continue to grow. NRM education can help sites maintain these nature play spaces on into the future by working in partnership with the children and the, the staff at the sites. And the real key thing is, is making the, the space a living, breathing part of the culture of the site. 
So what we do, we, we can come in, work with staff, find out what their ideas are to connect this nature play space with a bigger inquiry into sustainability at the site. So that might involve composting, food gardens, um, and also increasing the biodiversity, making the, the space locally contextual so that plants and uh, birds, butterflies, frogs, all those things come into the space and that really enriches the learning opportunities for children.